uh, wonderful opening and fabulous introduction. I'm very happy to be here. Yes, when you sent me, you mentioned that you had this going on. I was all about joining. Um, so thank you for inviting me. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, this is very exciting. Uh, I wish I could be there in person, but but I am not for many reasons. But I have been, I actually was with Vicki in New Delhi and enjoyed myself very much there for the brief time that we were there. So today I will be talking about interactive learning. And you'll notice that, that there's kind of an emphasis on active here. Um, just, I always stick this in my slides, we are recording. All right, so I thought we'd start with just kind of a, a little uh, brain exercise or warm up. Uh, I have a multiple choice question here for us. Uh, teaching is like A, filling a bucket, B, driving a car, C, lighting a fire, or D, something else entirely. So please go ahead and use the chat and put your answer in. So for example, if you said A, and then you should also say why. Uh, if you choose D, you should complete the analogy. I don't know, teaching is like baking a cake perhaps, but then tell us why. So I'll give you a moment to put your answer into the chat. You can just put A, B, C, or D. Although if you put D, complete it. And also just a, a brief explanation. Why do you see that analogy? Why do you think it is like baking a cake or driving a car, whichever you think it is. This will just give us a little bit of understanding um, and kind of a, a nice perspective of these different ways of teaching. Oh, so far I see B and C, and I'm curious to know more. These different ideas here. Oh, we've got two Cs now. So why is it like driving a car or why is it like lighting a fire? What's the, the similarity? Oh, okay, so C, because it has lasting impacts. Okay, oh, you, oh now we're really getting going now. Okay, D, oh, sharing and knowledge, very nice. Teaching for me is like trying to change a recipe for this. Oh, I like that. So cooking, but with some like personal alterations. <laughs> Getting a new computer, learning the ropes and then sharing the lot. Oh, I like that. Excellent. <laughs> same vegetable, the same way. We'll be boring. Absolutely agreed. Oh, I like that analogy. Hmm. Maybe next time I will, I will include that. Oh, inspiration here. Teaching is a way of life. Mm hmm transferring knowledge very good a creating a mold for somebody to fill the clay of knowledge and giving them a proper shape oh that's very poetic mm, we have some creative participants i can see excellent i'll give this about 30 more seconds if you'd like to put in your idea and why because we are filling or teaching a knowledge. Very good, so kind of filling up. Okay, I'm going to move on. Of course, you can continue to, oh, passion. Oh, that's a big part of it. Oh, a roller coaster <laughs> a ride. Roller coaster ride. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, woo! <laughs> ah, I love it, Irene. I think I know Irene. Ah, oh, filling the bucket, we need to fill our mind with knowledge. There's no boundary. Ah, that's why lighting a fire. Mm, very interesting. Okay. Feel free to continue. I'm going to move on. Thank you for sharing your ideas. So this is interesting to me. And then also uh, the poll uh, that Vicki did, I thought there were some uh, interesting uh, things to know about this audience that we have uh, some very experienced teachers here, mostly it seems like teaching is like baking uh, and that uh, none of you do a hundred percent lecture in your classes that was very uh, enlightening and also um, I don't know reassuring I think as well um, so good to see okay nice to know about this group that we're working with today 
and tomorrow and the next day. Uh, so today, to be a little more specific about what's going on, uh, I'm going to explain what I mean by interactive teaching because it is a, a, a term that's out there and has some different definitions. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about rationale and goals, and then uh, hopefully this will be appealing since most people are looking for methodology. We'll talk about some useful strategies. All right, so what I'm talking about in terms of interactive um, and that this transfer of information uh, is a two-way kind of thing. So the information goes two ways, dialogue, knowledge, they go two ways. So not just from teacher to student, but back from student to the teacher as well. So this is like a two-way street, but actually, as you'll notice, there's actually three arrows here because there is actually a third uh, kind of relationship here, and that is student to student. And we need to not uh, underappreciate the value of student to student uh, knowledge transfer as well, um, that there are many more students than teachers. And so if we can harness uh, that interaction as well, then we're really being effective and making the most of our classroom time. Uh, interactive here, I'm also referring to a very dynamic process here. And if you're wondering, what exactly does dynamic mean? Uh, if you go to Google and Google the word dynamic, this is literally what comes up uh, from Oxford Dictionary. And so when we're talking about a process or system such as education, then we see it's characterized by constant change, activity, or progress. And so uh, the way we teach, our teaching practice is not something static. It is something that's constantly in development, as is the process of learning. It's constantly changing. It's a progress. And then there is also the second definition that is used to describe people. And I thought this is also very appropriate um, because a dynamic described person, positive in attitude, full of energy and new ideas. And I think that's appropriate for us as well when we're talking about our learners and also when we're talking about our teachers. So you might have noticed that I have this active part in different colors to kind of uh, highlight and call attention to the active aspect of this term interactive. Ooh, sorry, I just looking at the chat. Oh, I like this. No matter which side is turned on, it is always stable. I didn't think that's brilliant. Thank you, Anita. All right, so when we talk about this activity, I'm referring to both mental activity and physical activity. So mental activity is basically we're doing something that students aren't just passive um, and sitting there and possibly falling asleep. So uh, their minds are active and this may, uh, they may be activated through maybe some kind of highlighting activity. Maybe they are writing a response. Uh, maybe they're orally responding to questions or engaging in some sort of discussion. There are other ways too, but just some examples of ways that we can um, mentally uh, activate our students and make sure that they're not that they're not just there and maybe mentally somewhere else or um, perhaps brain dead. And then physical activity uh, refers to any sort of aesthetic or manipulative activity. So maybe they're getting up and moving their bodies, walking around, or perhaps they're just using their hands to, to do something. It runs the, the whole gamut. I also thought I would include this uh, definition here. I like the way that Robertson paraphrases Prince's definition. Um, it's any type of instructional method that engages students in their learning process and requires meaningful, relevant and authentic learning activities, as well as requiring students to think about what they're doing, metacognition. So I like this because the attention it calls to meaningfulness, um, that what students are doing is relevant. Often, I feel from my own experience as a student in the classroom, that what's being learned doesn't really have much personal relevance. Uh, why are you learning? Because there's two, a test or a grade, and then what comes after that is really unclear. And then also uh, this aspect of metacognition, meaning that students uh, understand what they're learning, why they're learning, how they're learning. Um, again, it's not a passive process where information is just going in because that's not how learning happens actually. <laughs> 